Hello, welcome to Turgay Evren podcast. Today we are going to talk about cheating. Cheating in the exam. Don't tell me that you have never cheated in the exam. I wouldn't believe that. If you are a student, you must have cheated in the exam at least once in your life. And now I want to share a story of cheating in the exam with you. That story belongs to my life. It happened in my life and it's really an interesting story. I was a student in high school in the Arbakır and one day just I visited the foundation. There was a foundation where I came together with my friends and we had different social activities in this foundation. There was a man in the foundation and this man wanted to finish the high school from outside. He was not a regular student. So if you're not a regular student student in a high school, just you finish the exam, entering the entering the exam at the end of the year. And even though you're not attending the lessons when you get successful in these exams, you get entitled to receiving a diploma. This man was working in a mosque in a village as an imam, but I think he was not an official imam and he wanted to become an imam to get a salary from the government. And in Turkey, as you know, to become an imam, you must have graduated from a high school. Then just he told me that the next day, you know, he would have the exam in a high school. But in the exam there were many lessons and one of these lessons was English. And of course English was not very easy for him because he never studied English. So he didn't have any information about English. I wanted to help this man. And just I told him, okay, I can answer the exam instead of you. And he was very happy because he was also expecting this from me. Then we have arranged a fake ID card, school ID card. Just, you know, we had the ID card and we have changed the photos. I put my own photo on his school ID card, school identity card. Then we also found a, a stamp, but the stamp does not belong to any schools. Actually, it belongs to the foundation. And I also stamped the identity card, so it was not very easy to understand whether it was fake or not. The next morning I got up early and we came together. My heart was pounding because it was not very easy. And the first time in my life I would enter the exam in the place of another person. So we went to the school, of course, earlier than the exam. And just I was waiting in a garden. And before long, I entered the exam. There was a long corridor. There were many desks and the students were having the exam. And that time, of course, I was the youngest one because generally adults and most of the time the people uh, whose, whose ages range between 30 and 40 enter these exams and they try to get their diplomas. And everybody understood that, you know, I was entering the exam in place of another person. Then I sat on a desk and you know in the exam on one desk there is only one student and soon a teacher came to check the identity cards. When the teacher came I was very very nervous and the teacher you know had some suspicions about me and he wanted to check my identity card. He checked the identity card, school identity card very carefully, but there was nothing unusual. He saw the stamp and he saw the photo. It was my photo. Then the exam started. In the exam, the questions were not very difficult for me. My English was good and I started answering all the questions. But in the meantime, there were some other people they also understood that I knew the answers and they wanted to get copy from me. I was also trying to help the other people. Not only my own paper, but I was also trying to answer the questions on the other papers the people were asking me. And I was whispering 
the answers to the to the uh, to the students in the class. And after some time, this time the manager, the principal of the school, appeared on the corridor, and he has noticed that there were some there were some people in the exam trying to get some some help from me. There were some men and they were trying to get answers from me. And there were some women, they were also trying to get the answers from me. So he had a very big suspicion. He came to my desk and he also wanted to check my school identity card. When he checked the identity card, he saw that there was nothing unusual, but he was suspicious. And this time, just, you know, he asked me to stand up and to follow him. I was in a very difficult situation. I started following him, but my heart was beating very fast. I didn't know what would happen. Then I followed him downstairs and I went to his room. He opened the door and just on a bookshelf, he got some files and he found, he picked up a file and he started checking the original papers of the students then he found the paper and of course on the original document there was a different photo he was very angry he looked at me and just he told me your life is finished your school life is finished it was really a very difficult situation I didn't know what to do I was so ashamed of myself I had done something very bad and perhaps I would be punished severely for for the actions that I did I looked at the ground in shame and disappointment. Then the manager told me, you know, just if I call the police, you can find yourself in the jail. So it's not only about your school life. And even you can get deprived of your freedom. I didn't know what to say because I had nothing to say. Then suddenly the manager saw a hole in my shoes. My family was not well off. I came from a poor family and even my mother couldn't afford to buy me a pair of shoes those days. My father had passed away and all the burden of the family was built on my mother. And then he told me, look at your shoes. You must come from a poor family and look at what you are what, what you are doing because I can understand from your shoes from your clothes that your family is not good financially and you have put yourself in danger you jeopardize yourself for another person and now you are going to suffer the punishment for another person does your family deserve that I didn't know what to say. And the manager had some mercy on, on me. He saw my shoes and I think he pitied me. And then he told me, see that, uh, see that this time I'm going to forgive you. But the next time, when you get involved in something like this, I don't think that you are going to save yourself from this situation very easily. And it can cost your school life and your freedom. I didn't know what to say, just I thanked the manager silently and I left the schoolroom. When I went to the garden, that man who wanted to become an imam was waiting for me and he saw that, you know, I left the school earlier than the other students. He was concerned, he became anxious and when I explained the situation to him, he was very upset. He became very unhappy and that time I thought that this man is a selfish man because you put yourself in danger, you endanger your future for another person but that person is only concerned about himself and after that time I promised myself not to enter any exam instead of a different person. I'm not telling I stopped cheating completely, yeah at university, I was involved in different cheating activities and we had, of course, we, we had also established some companies, 
but this was like a very good lesson for me. You should be careful about yourself and you shouldn't put yourself in danger for the sake of another person because in the end you are going to suffer for your own actions. Yeah, the story is finished at this point. I hope that you like the story and you got a very good lesson from this story. Be careful about yourself and don't jeopardize your future for the sake of another person who wouldn't appreciate what you are doing. See you the next time.